Today we will be making a timer for my magician friend Anas, who wants to be able to keep track of how much time has elapsed on the stage. The requirements are that it should be battery driven, simple to operate and be mounted inside of his back. The timer will consist of four 7 second displays, a holder for two AA batteries and a tactile switch to start the time. The two batteries will provide a variable and slowly dropping voltage as they are being drained. This voltage is stepped up to a constant 3.6 volts, which is needed to power the display driver reliably. This is done using a small Texas Instruments step-up converter, which only needs a few supporting components. An inductor, an input capacitor and an output capacitor. Here is an overview of the rest of the system with an STM32 microcontroller block at the center, which is programmed with an STDC14 connector seen to the left. To the right, an RGB LED is connected for debugging and testing purposes. This will not be visible in the final product, but will become very handy when testing. SW102 is the switch will be used to start the timer. Finally, we can see the display block in the upper right hand corner. Inside the MCU block, we find the microcontroller with decoupling capacitors for all the power pins of the chip. Here is also seen which signals are connected to which I.O. pins of the MCU. Now to the fun part, where we find our four 7 second displays connected to this MAX7221 display driver, which is capable of driving up to 8 digits. This is not a cheap chip, but it makes it very easy to interface 7 second displays to a microcontroller. The drive current for each of the segments is set using a resistor between pin 18 and VCC. Using KiCad's PCB new tool, the schematic is turned into a PCB layout. The displays and the battery holder are placed on the front, and on the other side we see the rest of the components. Now the PCBs can be ordered from China, and just a week later they arrived in my mailbox. Enjoy the next two minutes of assembling and soldering all of the components to the PCB. The first test is to check whether the step-up regulator can convert the battery voltage to a stable 3.6 volts. Using the onboard test points, the raw battery voltage is measured to 2.5 volt. On the output of the regulator, 3.6 volt is seen, which is fine. The next step is getting the STM32 programmed using the ST-Link V3 Mini, which connects to the STC14 connector. To start with something simple, let's get the RGB status LED lighting up. The following defines are used to define which color we want to light up. The function below takes this color and turns on the correct GPIO pins for each of the red, green and blue output. As a quick test, the color is set to red and then reprogrammed to be blue. The following code for handling the button press is very simple and will be revisited in future videos so long and double presses can be detected. For now, it simply returns button press short if the input is asserted. Using this code, I made a small test 
which turns off the LED when the button is pressed. Let's take a look at controlling the MAX7221 display driver IC, for which we will be using the SPI interface. All interaction is done by writing two bytes, where the first is the address of the register we want to control, followed by the byte we want to write to the register. In the code in front of us, the SPI1 chip select pin is manually set low, followed by writing the two bytes and then setting the chip select high again. Using this function, we can write another function to write a digit to the display. It takes three parameters, which digit to control, the value to display, and whether to turn on the decimal point or not. First, each digit is set to the numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4 without any decimal points enabled, and then one of the decimal points is turned on. The display time function can now be written by building on top of the write digit functionality we just implemented. A number of seconds can be specified, which is split into seconds and minutes, and finally split into the four digits we need to display. Everything can now be combined into this main application, which handles setting up system clock, hardware peripherals, and the drivers we just wrote. The MAX7221 is then initialized by writing to the register described in its datasheet. And then the time initialized to display 0 seconds. The while one loop keeps running and detects when the button is pressed to then start the timer. After programming the MCU, this code can be tested. I then 3D printed an enclosure for the electronics to be mounted in. It has a set of holes to sew in Velcro, so it can be mounted easily and be removed again. To secure it further, some Loctite superglue is added. Now it's just a matter of screwing in the 4 M3 screws and inserting two AA batteries. Finally, I can send it off to Anders in Copenhagen, which was kind to send me this footage of the timer installed in his bag.